Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, this week we're going to be coding in our blue soul attack. Now, most people think of Sans when they think of this attack, but actually it's Papyrus that uses it on you first. As you can see, what it does is it afflicts your player with gravity, meaning that you fall down towards the bottom of the screen, and your up button becomes your jump button, and you control a lot more like Mario or Sonic, a more traditional platformer. Now you've probably coded a platformer before, so you might be thinking, oh, this is going to be nice and easy, but we have a complication. Later on, Sans uses a much more advanced version of this attack, where he can turn gravity in any of four different directions, up, left, right, or down. So we're going to use some code that allows us to do the same, use a blue soul attack, but be able to shift gravity in one of those four directions. So everything that we do today is going to be in the heart sprite. So select your heart sprite, go to the costumes tab in the top left corner, then right click on our red costume, duplicate. Let's call this costume blue. Make sure that you move this costume all the way to the bottom. Use the select tool to select the heart, change the color, but here's something you might not expect. We are going to rotate this heart, and the reason why will be clear later. With the heart still selected, move your mouse over these two curly arrows at the bottom here. Now hold down Shift on your keyboard, and then rotate the heart like this. We want the point of the heart pointing left. Okay, let's go back to the code. Now we need to make sure that our red soul movement only happens if we have the red heart costume. Go to control, get out if then, and put it right underneath define red soul. Then go to operators, get out an equals, put it in between the if and the then. Go to looks, look down until you find costume number drag that out, put it into the first socket here. Now theoretically you could keep this as costume number, but I prefer using the name. It makes more sense and it's easier to read. So I'm going to click on that number and change it to name. Then I'm going to click here on this 50 and I'm going to type in red. It's very important that red is spelt the same way here as it's spelt in your costumes. Then go to motion get out point in direction 90 and put it just underneath if costume equals red. We're going to be moving our blue soul around a lot, so whenever we go back to the red soul, we need to make sure that the heart is facing the right direction. Let's give it a quick test to make sure that our red soul movement still works. Yep, yeah, that's still fine. Now let's do the interesting bit, the blue soul movement. Make some space underneath where your define blue soul movement is. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a bit better. Now go to control, get out an if then, go to operators, get out an equals, go to looks, get out costume name, and type in here, blue. Now we need a way of turning off some of our movement depending in which direction gravity is meant to be going. So go to control, get out an if then else, and put it inside our if costume name equals blue. Then go to operators, get out an equals operator, put it right here. Go to motion, get out direction from the bottom, and then click on the 50 and type in zero. Now, have a look at your heart right now. If we change the direction of it to zero, which way is gravity going to be pulling it? It's going to be pulling it down, isn't it? Which means that we have to disable our up arrow, otherwise it's like our character can just float up without the gravity working. So in the code, if our direction is zero, then we need something here that will make the gravity work and the jump work. 
But if the direction is anything else other than zero, we should be able just to move up as normal. So under this else, we're going to put in a move up. Go to my blocks and get out move up and put it right here. This is one of the advantages of using my blocks is we don't have to write out all of that move up code again. But now we need something here to make our gravity and jump work. So for now, let's click on make a block. Let's just call it jump. It will also have the gravity code in it. And then press OK. Drag a jump from the side there and just put it here. Now right click right here, duplicate and put this whole thing underneath. And we need to change this direction and then change this move. So let's say if the direction is 90. If the direction of our heart is 90, it's going to be facing in this direction. So which direction is gravity going to be pulling it? It's going to be pulling it left, which means we need to turn our move right off. Take away this move up and put a move right underneath this else. Remember, the else is only going to happen if the direction is anything except 90. Let's do it again. Duplicate. And this time, let's choose the direction of 180. Let's take out this move right and put in a move down. And then duplicate again. Put it right here. Change this direction to minus 90. Take away this move down and replace it with a move left. Let's zoom out so we can see it all at once. That's looking pretty good. Make sure that you get these numbers correct. And let's put some code underneath define jump. Now, because we are rotating our heart around, we're going to be able to use move blocks instead of changing X and Y. So we're going to create a variable to keep track of our velocity. We're going to go to variables and click on make a variable. Call this velocity and select for this sprite only and then press OK. Now, velocity is all to do with speed, acceleration, deceleration, and that kind of thing. It's why when you throw something up in the air, as it goes up, it slows down, stops, and then starts falling like that. And it's a lot more satisfying having jump physics that uses velocity. So now we need to make our gravity work, and we can do that by changing our velocity by a minus number. So get out a change velocity and I quite like minus 0 0.8. Now if you make this number a smaller number like minus 0 0.4 for example you'll be able to jump higher and you'll also float back down to earth slower. And if you make this a larger number like let's say minus 1 Gravity will be a bit stronger, you'll fall a little bit faster, the game could be a little bit harder. So it's up to you what you want to choose for this number here. Obviously if you make this too small, then you'll jump up and float slowly down and we won't really have the gravity effect that we want. Now go to motion and get out move 10 steps, go back to variables and get out velocity and put it inside our move steps. Go to control, get out an if then, go to sensing, get out a touching mouse pointer, put it here, but change the mouse pointer to box. Under the if we need move minus velocity steps. and then go to variables and get out set velocity to zero. When we've hit the box, we want to reset our speed to nothing. 
Now, so that we can test our game, let's create some code to be able to turn on our blue soul movement while we're playing. Scroll down, go to events, get out when space key pressed, go to looks, get out switch costume to blue, go to motion and get out point in direction 90. Now I'm going to use the WASD keys to turn on the blue soul movement, but if you've already used these keys for something else, just use some other keys on the keyboard, it's totally fine. So the first one I'm gonna make is going to be when W key is pressed, switch the costume to blue and point in direction 180. I'm going to copy this. When A is pressed, point in direction 90. When S is pressed, point in direction zero. And when D is pressed, point in direction minus 90. Okay, let's give it a test. Okay, let's try this. If I press W, there we go. I'm now being pulled towards the ceiling. If I press D, I'm being pulled towards the floor. There we go. This is working perfectly. All we need to do now is program in our jump. Okay, go back up to your define jump and make sure you've got plenty of space underneath the bottom of it. We're going to create a variable that controls when you can jump. Otherwise, you can get this glitch where you're able just to infinitely jump in the air. And it's very strange. It's kind of more of a flappy bird mechanic and it's not what we want. So go to variables, click on make a variable. We're going to call this jumps and make sure that you click for this sprite only. Press OK. So now what we need to do is make sure that when gravity forces us to the ground, we get our ability to jump back. So get out a set variable and put it right here underneath set velocity. We want to set jumps to one. Now, if you wanted a double jump, you could put two here, but I'm gonna keep things nice and simple and just have a single jump. Now go to control, get out an if then, put it on the bottom, go to operators, get out a more than, put it in between the if and the then, go to variables, get out jumps, put it in the first socket and click here and type in zero. All of our jump code is going to happen in here and we are not going to be able to jump unless we have at least one in our jump variable. Now go to control, get out an if then, put it in here, go to sensing, get out a key space pressed, then go to variables, and get out a set variable and a change variable. We want to set our velocity to 10. And this change here needs to change the jumps by minus one. So each time you jump, it takes away one from this variable, which prevents you from jumping again until you hit the ground, in which case it recharges your jumps variable and you can jump again. Now this number here, set velocity to 10, if you make this a larger number, your jump will go further, be more powerful. If you make this a smaller number, it will be a weaker jump. So now we have a problem. To activate our jump is the space button, which is really annoying because we'd much rather use our arrow keys to do our jump. But the problem is that the arrow key that we use to jump changes every time the gravity changes direction. So we could copy this code out, but that would be kind of annoying. And we have a much better way of solving this with inputs. So right click on define jump, click edit, click on add an input and call this input button. 
You can call it key as well if you want. This is the button on your keyboard, the key on your keyboard that you press in order to activate your jump. Press OK. Now, if you take this button input here, you can actually drag it over where it says space in key space pressed. And then all we need to do is go across to these inputs that are over here in our jump my blocks and just fill in the button that we want to use. So because I'm using the arrow keys, I'm going to type in here up arrow. Now it's very important you spell this exactly correct. So for this one here, it needs to be the right arrow. Now for this one here, it needs to be the down arrow. And for this one here, it needs to be the left arrow. Okay, let's give that a test. Okay, moment of truth. I'm going to activate the blue soul mode. Ah, oh, excellent. Our jump's working perfectly. You can see how satisfying this jump is because we're using the velocity. Yeah, that's almost all of them. That's all directions tested and working. That's perfect. And that's about it for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to make sure that you get notifications for when next week's episode is out and ready. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to do next or if you need any help. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.